Okay, I would like to try to shed some light uh, of this DHS2 and why it's called DHS2. It's not so important. Who knows why it's called IBM? Uh, so how has it, we would like to shed some light to, to, this, to um, the, how DHS2 has become a platform for digital public, global public good. We, we use the global because we have a very much emphasis on the global. Um, DHS2 and the Health Information Systems Program started as an action research program already in 1994 as a post-apartheid project. So we have a 25 years of history of doing capacity building through action research, meaning studying how you make sustainable systems as well as making the sustainable systems. So we have been traveling through geography and technology from Microsoft uh, access systems, running around, driving around the floppy disk, USB sticks, sending emails, to cloud-based um, uh, internet, mobile internet, and of course uses whatever you have at devices in your pocket to be able to capture data, but also to be uh, having data for action. Because from the very, very beginning, we uh, had the Scandinavian tradition uh, of principles for participatory design. It's not a buzzword, actually. It's true. Um, and so the, the mantra has been from the very beginning, information for action. Making not only the data coming upwards, but also data coming in downwards in order to be actionable. So we had that focus on all DHS2, the health information system for all health program, with a f really a focus on the integration of the health programs, because we know about the silos. Every time there is a software system, there is silos involved. So mother and child, for instance, will have, will be, can have um, HIV, TB, malaria, and will be then part of three different programs. So she and her children would then be an example of a very, very important integration that we are working on and researching on. So we had so mentioning um, starting off as aggregate, going down to, to event like uh, birth and death, but also following, tracking people through a uh, health program. So we have been financed and um, by all, today, all the health programs. I will talk a little bit about it because it's important when we talk about uh, digital global public good, how to finance the core platform development. That's not so easy and uh, very few want to do that because they want to be present in the, in the countries, in the projects. We are also at WHO Collaborative Center. We have, a, um, have seconded last seven years, have people from the University of Oslo coming to the WHO to work on that one. So the 68 countries we are mentioning, and I will show by the map where those 68 countries are. This, con this map was developed, was um, updated two days ago through the DHS2. And the population data here, why are we saying we are 2.4 billion covered by the services? That is uh, um, the population data from each country that use DHS2 as a fully scaled national system. And when we talk about the 68 countries, then we're mentioning India as one country, not the 15 states. So in addition, the PEPFAR countries uh, uh, constitute of 58, but that's something else. Our focus is on the ministry, the national systems. So how has this investment been possible? It has actually developed as a um, partnership of investors. Thanks to NORAD, Supporting us from the very beginning, together with the Norwegian Research Council. However, supporting the core was only done after uh, an evaluation, saying, since so many countries, at that time only 13, uh, was uh, relying on DHS2 24-7, you really need to support core also. Not only the project by project or research funds. So we see here, this is just an interesting graph, seeing how on this side, that's countries, you see, up to, 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 to 80, 90 countries. That side is million of dollars, the investments, and that's when the partners came in to support the core, because Nora didn't really support the core before that. So we see that um, each global health agency came on different uh, time. However, now, from being two major donors, as uh, PEPFAR and NORAD, and Global Fund also coming uh, later, uh, with more amount, Today we have five big, equally big donors, and that is a success in itself. And the, the PEPFAR has actually been the one, one uh, working hard to get, oops, time is flying, okay? So how have we been able to do this? Through action research. 
We are developing capacity as we go. 60 PhD students from the Global South has been taking their degree through this program, thanks to Norwegian Quota program that is not existing anymore, hopefully coming back this year or next year. Um, so we are doing um, local innovation in countries, putting it through this action research engine, and having equally emphasized on the platform as well as the capacity building. So this is done together with the all 14 HISP groups that we are in the, in, the, in the region and in the countries. Talking of Sierra Leone, we have been collaborating with Sierra Leone since 2007, so since it was mentioned. Um, we are working with Global uh, WHO on this dissemination of uh, best practice standards, using DHS, uh, WHO using DHS2 as a platform to disseminate uh, these packages based on DHS2, but on the WHO indicators and the uh, metadata configuration. Just an example of a local innovation, a missile campaign from uh, October this year, last month, nearly at midnight, 1049, they had a real-time um, uh, command center setting up DHS2 as a real-time actionable um, uh, monitor that they could monitor all the uh, where they missed the outbreak campaign. 19 children were vaccinated through this campaign. And if you're thinking about uh, DHS2 beyond public health, reusing the software and the capacity, we are now into DHS2 for education. And that measles campaign used actually the population data from the DHS2 for education in these two districts that we are now piloting, thanks to NORAD, <laughs> in Uganda and Gambia. My time is up. <laughs>